Our last comedian of the evening, everybody, uh -huh. warm welcome to the Zinc. Mark Zinc. Zinc, 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 Zinc. 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 Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants my money. My ex-wife, the IRS, France. France really wanted my money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how. When you're in Paris, you're close to the Eiffel Tower and you stare at it. When you hear this word, hey, some girls come up to you and they ask you this one question. It is, do you speak English? I'm thinking, no. <laughs> they suspect otherwise and they give you a petition to sign. What's this? She says, sign this, sign this. The petition is to, do to donate money to orphans who are deaf and mute. My buddy sense was turning on at this moment. So I read it over. There were a few spelling errors. Since I was a teacher here, I decided to correct them. The word orphans has a spelling error. No, not A. It's an E, it should be an A. Thinking it's a scam, underneath the word name, I wrote, you got zint. <laughs> the amount to donate? Zero. And then I gave it back to her. Believe it or not, she didn't know what that meant. <laughs> oh, what? I met the one person. There's a second scammer in France, Paris. After you exit the Eiffel Tower, he says, you, come here. Me? He gives you a string. He says, you, put your finger in the string. Again, I'm suspicious of this. I heard about this scam back in 2003. Genius. What happens is you put your finger in it, he ties a knot, and then he demands $10 to snip it. So when he, when he asked for my finger to be put in it, I told him no. But then I added, there's another part of my body I can put in it. Just pretend I'm your grandpa and keep pulling. He got oh it. He's a little dirty dog. Two people got that thing that day. <laughs> but in Paris, they've got a new scam. If you go down an alley, you'll meet somebody who wants to sell you cutlery. Wow. He's got spoons, forks, and knives. But you only see the knife. <laughs> He walked down the alley and says, you, come here. What's this? He brings out the knife and says, money. I deduced he wants to exchange the knife for some, for some, for some money. So I uh, leaned in closer. I don't believe really I need a knife. But I'm curious, how much? He says, money, money. How much money? As, as much money as you have. What? No, that makes no sense. I can buy that same knife down the store for five euros. You want me to give you a thousand euros? I thought about this. Wait, something's not right. He's trying to rob me. Oh, I get it now. But then I realized, this is exactly what I trained for. <laughs> All this training is coming back to me. <gasps> what do I do? So I told him, all right, I need you to put the knife into the other hand. <laughs> what? Other hand, other hand. I never trained with that hand. It was to me, no, money, no, no. You, you trade the knife. I said, no. I told you, look, buddy, if that knife doesn't go into this hand, your kids are, are going to become orphans. And then the other people have to sign that petition and not give any money. He didn't get it. He didn't get any money. I didn't get my knife. Yeah. Here's my final impression of France. When you're in France, you notice on the roads, every road has trees lying on the side. Who knows why? The answer is very simple. So that the German army has shade on their march to Paris. 
You did not. <laughs> I totally did. Oh, Mark. Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs>